Welcome back to the Fic of the Week. I'm Random Heary. We have Catbit. Hey everyone, I'm back. Shane's not with us this week. The last story was so horrible that he just ended up shooting himself. He's currently recovering in the hospital. We wish him the best of luck. Mm-hmm. Hope everyone's safe. Everyone's, like, um, quarantined so they can hide from Sonic's balls. Fuck the coronavirus. We all have to hide from Sonic's balls. Yo, Dude. Sonic's balls are more dangerous than the coronavirus. Because think about it. The coronavirus, you die slowly. Like, it kills you probably, like, in a couple weeks or some shit. But Sonic's balls, you die on impact. There's so no cure from it. Like the, so basically, it's the virgin coronavirus versus the chat and Sonic blue balls. And I wouldn't consider Sonic's ball to chat because that thing can kill me, like, in a second. It even kills you faster than cancer. Sonic's balls, you die in a fucking snap. You get Thanos. <laughs> So yes, so his balls are basically like the, the Infinity Gauntlet. It is. Oh shit. Mm-hmm. Alright, so this week we're working on chapters 13 through 15. This is the play saga. But didn't they say that the play was gay? Who cares that the play is gay? We're here to read it anyway. Sonic High School, chapter 13, Picking Up Silver. A cool car raced through the city streets. <laughs> said the car as it went down the big street with lots of other cars on it. The city was filled with buildings with lights and other things like places like McDonald's, quotation mark, comma, quotation mark, shouted the car as it went back and forth and going in between other cars so it did not have to wait in traffic. But can we stop by at McDonald's because I want to play some shadow basketball? I mean, I remember a McDonald's having like Metroid Prime. Wait, McDonald's had Metroid Prime? Yeah. I don't remember this. Yeah, this was like in Queens. The car was playing techno and rock and roll music. Techno is short for technology. Oh shit. <laughs> Yelled the car doing a big turn into the city into section. Location it's updated. Called Pepe. Oh, Pepe, like Pepe the Frog. Yeah, because you know the re sound. Oh yeah. Or as what family guy says, Pepe, the alt right frog. <laughs> Location updated on Ultra Chaos Emerald, said the driver of the car. The car screen blinked to different things, and then the ro robot voice said, Beep beep, Ultra Chaos Emerald, getting closer. Shadow looked at the map screen and drove faster towards the red dot, and that it was the last Ultra Chaos Emerald was. Beep 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 beep, said the car <laughs> in a robot voice as Shadow got closer to the dot while driving his car. It was just around the corner now. Shadow did another fast turn into the into section and right where the red dot on the map was. <laughs> How many times are they gonna do this? Scream the car. No, no, this is funny. In the robot voice, as his car dot and the Ultra Chaos Emerald dot on the map moved into each other, and in the real world, Shadow pulled up to the curb where there was a couple of gang men. Thanks, Omega said Shadow as he hopped out of the car, which was black and red, and onto the dark city street. He looked at the- HE LOOKED AT THE BLACKS! <laughs> Woo! We're back to racism again in this fanfic, aren't we? Alright, you're on your third strike, author. You're out of here. Oh, boy. There's no going back from this. There's no going back- I mean, I'm pretty sure we'll never go back after reading, uh, X-Men arcade game or Knuckles transforming things to innocent magic. Alright, let's just read it how it is. He looked at the blacks, standing there, and they looked dangerous. But Shadow knew they had the Ultra Chaos Emerald. Shadow took out a gun and pointed at them and said, Give me the last Ultra Chaos Emerald. And they looked surprised and startled. They checked their pockets and while they were doing that, the gun became used. And Shadow shot all three of them. They were now dead. Jesus Christ. You know what? They, they don't have to be like black men. They're probably like black hedgehogs like Shadow. I mean, how do we know that like there is no such thing as humans in this universe? What if like everybody is an animal? I, I hope it's just black hedgehogs. That's what I'm hoping. Shadow reached into the middle one's pocket and found what they came for. The last Ultra Chaos Emerald. They were like the regular Chaos Emeralds, the more powerful and the secret until they found out. Shadow hopped back into the car, Omega the robot car, and said, I got it. Now I can get one wish to come true. I'm going to think about it while I use it and before I use it. Alright, so the Ultra Chaos Emeralds are just Dragon Balls or some shit? The Chaos Emeralds always been Dragon Ball. Yo, Kira Toriyama, I think you gotta, like, sue this guy. 
Shadow looked at the map and he said, Give me directions to hamburger restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you said McDonald's lives in this universe. McDonald's is in the Sonic High School lore. Why can't you just go to McDonald's, not hamburger restaurant? Yeah, you, you, you could get the fucking Shadow basketball game at McDonald's. Omega changed some screens and in the robot voice. Bebop, bop, hamburger restaurant location found. It is over here. And Shadow looked at where the dock was. It was right nearby, so Shadow drove there with lots of loud sounds. Shadow went to the drive-thru and got a hamburger and fries and sat in the parking lot in Omega and ate it. This is great. I love this place. It is my favorite place to go to after I finish a crime, said Shadow darkly. Omega did not need food because he was a robot shaped into a car. Shadow finished eating and threw the garbage into Omega's trash hole, where he turned <laughs> litter into gasoline. That could be really environmentally safe. That sounds really awesome. Yeah, yeah. The, the, maybe the author might have something going for you. You know what? Uh, I'm starting to warm up to the author. I think they have good ideas, which was useful. Yeah. Then Shadow took out his penis. <laughs> Damn it. You had me, and then you just fucking screwed yourself. Where does he use his penis on, Father? Hey, Omega, check this out. And Shadow laughed, and he took out his big, neat, hard penis and stuck it in Omega's trash hole. What? <laughs> Cap it? I, I hate this fucking franchise so much. <laughs> Unrecognized item in trash hole. Error, said Omega. That's my penis, man. <laughs> said Shadow to Omega. Eh, eh, penis not trash. Not allowed in trash hole. <laughs> said Omega to the Shadow. <laughs> you know, I'm starting to wonder which is worse, Shadow doing this or the guy who admitted that he fucked a hot pocket when he was 14. Shadow couldn't fit all of his big, strong penis into Omega's trash hole anyway, so he took it out and gave Omega a taste of his balls too. <laughs> Oh my, Omega didn't recognize Shadow's balls as trash either, which was good. Then Shadow put his balls back and started to drive off with his hands still on his penis. But why would you do that? My brain is at a loss for words with this. <laughs> I, I thought like the whole Espio and Knuckles kissing thing was weird. I hate this fucking fanfic. Let's just continue. Where is Silver's house? Said Shadow to Omega while he rubbed really quick and hard on his no, penis. don't put Silver into this. Don't drag him into this. With one hand while his other was driving, Omega updated his map and showed where Silver's house was on the other side of the dark city. Shadow kept empowering his penis with his one hand and he drove faster and more dangerously. Soon, his penis was so big he could hardly see in front of him anymore and he did a zigzagging across the street trying to keep both his penis and car in control. <laughs> oh my god. Then he put both his hands on his penis and made it do all sorts of things until it was done and his penis redecorated the inside of Omega with white curtains. Just so you know, that's my semen, said Shadow to Omega. Omega knew that already. Shadow put both his hands back on the steering wheel and drove faster. And then suddenly, some loud sounds and flashing lights came up behind him. Walk, walk, walk! The police is following you! <laughs> Said Omega. Shadow decided to follow the law and stopped his car in the street and waited for the police to come over to him. Shadow's penis was still big though, so he tucked it under his leg on the right and he stuck up the middle finger in Omega's car and Shadow put his hand on it. The police came over to the front window of Omega and looked inside Shadow's vehicle. Cool vehicle, said the police officer. Thanks, said Shadow to the police back. Okay, do you know that you were breaking the law by going that fast and back and forth on the street? Said the police to Shadow, sounding more like Miss Lesson than a real person. Because, you know, teachers aren't real people. Yeah, I do. Said Shadow, and he patted his hand on his penis right in the middle of the front of the car. Sir, please take your hand off the gear stick in the middle of the car right now. Said the police to Shadow. Shadow looked at the police and laughed and said, That is not a gear stick, that is my penis! And drove off before the police could say anything or even react at all. You have broken another law! said Omega to Shadow. Shadow laughed because he could see the police far behind him giving up and going to an easier criminal. Now, said Shadow, let's go to Silver's house. Shadow drove the car fast past Silver's house on the other side of the city, and then when he got there, he braked the car so hard that the sound it made was like hearing the world's largest bird getting punched in his tummy. Okay, so, so he's okay with saying vagina, but, but he can't use fucking stomach. He just says tummy. 
Shadow honked the corn, and he finished honking the horn. Silver jumped out of the window and onto the street, and into the side seat of Omega. That's a kind of weird flex, Silver, but alright. Hey, Shadow. Thanks for the ride, said Silver. Cool curtains you put up. Shadow laughed and said, no problem. <laughs> now if you hurry up by driving fast, you will be late for the play. Silver said, do not worry. We were not there on time. Silver was another big what role in the play. Voice? I don't know, I guess it's Silver is John Lake was ammo. <laughs> okay. Silver was another big role in the play, but he was not a huge gay like Charmy B. Silver was kind of like Sonic, but less fast. Sonic also had the best morals. There it is again! Yeah, Sonic's best morals. The same guy who only cares about his girlfriend because he wants to get her fucking pants. But maybe Silver dressed better. But that was kind of gay too. Silver didn't have a hairy thing going on that made it look like a marijuana. 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 Though, so maybe Sonic was better at being stylish anyway. It is hard to tell because Silver lived in the city, which was kind of far away from the high school. Shadow stepped on the gases, and the car went away through the city moonlight and towards the city to the high school. That's the end of chapter 13. Who wrote this chapter? Same author. This doesn't sound... It's like... Where's the weird shit like the previous chapters? I don't know, I'm really weirded out by Shadow sticking his penis in like a trash hole or some shit. I, I really don't give a shit anymore. Shadow fucked his car. No, the shit, man, what are you fucking done? Why did you create this goddamn franchise? Chapter 14, everybody. The play. Sonic and Amy got to high school and went to the play, which was at the school. When they got to the auditorium, they were not expecting to be surprised, but they were. Because the auditorium was actually full of men and women idiots waiting to see the play. Cool young people such as high school students did not come to see the play unless they had to. The place was so full that Sonic and Amy had to sit in bad seats surrounded by strangers that could have been dirty or usually did crime. Jesus Christ. Is it with this author generalizing everybody? Good to see this author was pampered all his life. Sonic looked around the place and saw Rouge and Knuckles Jr., who was a baby, sitting really by the door out, and Tails and Cream all the way by the other side, which is where they probably were, would have sat anyway, because Tails hated Sonic to the sky! Sonic also saw Shadow standing around places, but he did not get it in his seat because he was too bad for that. We're at the play now, said Amy to Sonic, even though she was surrounded by people who were neither of them. I wonder when it will begin. It is going to start soon, said Sonic. Sonic back to Amy. What I am wondering is not that, but if Charmy B is going to mess up big time because he's been acting weird all week, I bet you he will. Sonic laughed about this because this did not really matter to him, but it did to Charmy. The play they were doing was the Christmas story, even though it was not Christmas time, but they thought it was a good idea to do anyway. In the play, Silver played Joseph, who was Jesus' dad. Charmy played Mary because even though he was not a girl, everyone thought he was anyway. Baby version of Jesus was going to be played by Knuckles, who fitted the role now that he was a baby. Sonic and Amy sat patiently in the seats where they were, even though Sonic could have been running around. Sonic waited by rubbing Amy's leg and seeing how close he could get his hand to her vagina before she rubbed him off. Sonic determined that Amy was prime and ready for sex because her vagina felt hard. They don't get hard! It's on it! Sonic, random, how many times do I have to tell you this lesson? Every woman in this goddamn universe is a fucking hermaphrodite. They all have penises, alright, okay. And loose, as far as he could tell when they got close to it with his hand before the play began. He almost forgot totally he had a deadly ball disease. So Sonic's willing to risk it all, to kill Amy just so he can get Cooch. Boyfriend of the year, ladies and gentlemen. He just needs a crumb of Coochie that he's willing to kill her with his fucking corona balls. What, does Camp Coochie not exist in this universe? I guess not. This play eventually started, and it was just as gay as you thought it would be. There was singing and songs, but otherwise, it was like the Christmas story always was. Mary got a letter from an angel saying that she was going to have a baby, but she did not want to have the baby at home because the king would not let babies vote. Um, what? Babies should have rights to vote, come on. So Mary and Joseph rode bikes all the way from London to Jerusalem. London? When was, where was that in the Bible? And they had bikes? with the camels not exist in that time period? Here's what I'm getting from this. Like, they're trying to come up with excuses to make sure that Jesus was white. But if this was written by, like, some privileged white bitch? It probably was. 
When they got there, the hospital was full, so they went to the barn and had the baby there. And it turned out to be the legendary hero, Jesus. Though the whole play, Silver did a pretty good job. Charmy did an okay job, but everyone sure believed he was a woman because his voice was so high. And girls. <laughs> That's not offensive by today's thing. Then they got to the ending where Mary was to have her baby out. Mary flipped onto her front, and Joseph pulled Jesus out of her butt which looked totally fake. Sonic could tell, even with special effects. Joseph held Jesus up to show God and then gave him to Mary, who was actually Charmy. Charmy looked at Jesus, knuckles, really close, and then reached into his clothing with the hand that was not holding him and pulled out a knife. Time to get murdered, said Charmy as he was back to kill Knuckles. Just as he began to do this, Silver bodily flew into them and knocked Knuckles up and away from Charmy. Oh my god! What is happening? Said Amy, who was startled hard. Charmy is trying to kill Knuckles! Obviously, said Sonic to Amy. It was true, and people started to be yelling and screaming. Just then, a gunshot came from the back of the audience. Oh shit, we're in the school shooting part of the fanfic, and we're not even halfway through it. Jesus Christ. This fanfic is way ahead of its time, my dude. Yo, where was the metal detectors? Where was, where was Cartman being the hall monitor? Where is Cartman? We could, he could have stopped this shit. He could have told these students to respect his Tom. Anyway, where are we? Shadow pulled out his gun and from his spot. His, his spot? <laughs> his spot. I, I will never know what that spot is. The world may never know, and probably that's a good thing and aimed it at Charmy B from the back of the audience. Shadow fired his gun, and the bullet hit his head. But he must have been wearing a gun-proof helmet because the bullet from the gun went off of his head and up into the ceiling, where it hit the light and the light fell down alongside with other things. Something from the ceiling fell into the back of the stage where the props were, and one of the props was a BOMB that they used for some other things. A BOMB! Oh great, now they have like atomic bombs in this thing. What kind of fucking school is this? A Bomb. The prop was a real bomb. I'm at a loss for words. What kind of fucking school did I go to? Must be public school. <laughs> Maybe that explains it. Because I went to public school and all the props they used for plays were like guns, knives, and bombs. Holy shit, what if this author really knows his stuff? Yeah, because you know, America. Fuck yeah. The prop was a real bomb though, and when the thing hit, the bomb exploded. The bomb exploded with a huge explosion, like a bunch of horses made of fire running through the place. Suddenly, people did not really care about the play anymore because the place was full of fire and could kill you. Rouge and Knuckles Jr. already got out quick, right away, because they were by the door. Sonic looked in and saw Amy next to him, who was almost unconscious. Because of all the fire and smoke, and shocking things, Sonic picked her up and ran out of the auditorium with his fast speed. Sonic found Rouge and Knuckles Jr. outside the hallway where it was safe. Are you okay? Said Rouge. Knuckles Jr. predicted that this would happen, so we sat then by the door. Did, then why did he go there if he predicted that? So we could get out easy. You know, you could have warned everyone that this shit was gonna happen if he saw this in the future. You really are mutter material, Rouge. Yeah, so fuck you, Rouge. You could have saved everyone, but nah, people died. This truly is a sad day in American history. Yes, we are okay, said Sonic. Amy here is going into a shock attack, but it was nothing she will not get over. Sonic looked around and saw people running out, but there was a lot of other people still stuck in the auditorium, and some of them were fainted. People were leaving and not helping the other people get out. The lunch lady, who had ears but was deaf, was running into the auditorium and carrying out women and children back out. The lunch lady lived in Mongolia by herself as a child, and became a very strong but from carrying trees back from the frozen forest into the villages that she traveled between so now she could carry stacks of people. Since she was deaf, all the other noises and fire did not bother her because she could not hear. She's a Mongolian. Yeah. What, what even is this universe? Look at the fucking lunch lady saving everyone. Can we just be honest? The lunch lady is the best character. Yeah, fuck Sonic. Alright, so far, the S-tier character is the lunch lady. And Sonic is like F-tier. Sonic saw the lunch lady bring out cream, but Tails was not being brought out because he was not a woman or a child. Sonic thought, damn, he is still my friend. Sonic swallowed his scary feelings and ran into the burning auditorium to Tails who was passed out in front. Sonic picked up Tails and ran and brought his body outside up to the hallway and began to do CPR on his body and Sonic thought, this will look gay. 
but it did not matter because Tails was still his friend. Sonic pushed onto his body and started kissing him to give him life again. Sonic kept kissing and kissing, and Amy and Rouge and Knuckles Jr. watched him as he kissed Tails' face. But Tails was not waking up. Sonic, said Shadow on the side. Charmy has escaped and is running through the school like a murderer now. Stop CPR kissing Tails. You have to help us catch him. <laughs> then Silver gave Knuckles to Rouge and said, What was Silver's voice again? Oh yeah, I, I forgot, he's John Leguizamo. He's safe now! But he needs some sleep. Rouge was so happy that she could have kissed him, but did not. Sonic looked and said, Amy, finish doing CPR on Tails. I will let you, and I will not get jealous. Sonic kissed her on the mouth and felt one of her boobs and ran off to Shadow and Silver to catch the guy who was trying to kill baby Knuckles and was now running around the school and could danger them all. That's the end of chapter 14. Let's get the fact, let's go to chapter 15. I think I'm losing my mind. Just listen. All right, Sonic High School. Chapter 15, Killer on the Loose, but loose is spelled with a C instead of an S. Footloose, everybody go footloose. Oh, hang on, there's an author's note. Author's note, what? I wrote this chapter on a train. Okay. That's cool, that's cool. Shadow and Silver ran ahead into the school, but Sonic stopped into the bathroom and he took an enormous bad smelling poop. So it's no, so it's not a mad poop, but an. I mean, Sonic knew he must be very emotional because this poop was so big that he was trying to flush the toilet. The big poop log just folded in half and clogged the toilet easily. <laughs> While you looking, know what this reminds me of what? Not gonna, this reminds me of like that one episode of Bob's Burgers. Gene just like poops into like the Jimmy Pe Pesto's uh, restaurant and ends up clogging the toilet during Super Bowl Sunday. Yeah. Yo, was Sonic eat that pussy four four five? Always like flooding the toilets. <laughs> <laughs> what does he that pussy four or five clock toilet? Oh yeah, he's known for like destroying toilets. Oh no, I gotta keep my toilet safe. Yeah. Also, like, um, apparently whenever Sonic is feeling very emotional, he just shits. Okay. That's very relatable, because I do the same yeah. thing. Random, you sure you don't need to go to the hospital just for admitting that? I know, I think it's a better coping mechanism than what other people do. Whatever. Where was I? Oh yeah. The big poop vlog just folded in half and clogged the toilet easily while looking like the part of the really fat pretzel that you would get at the mall. Not like the little ones you get in bags at the supermarket. Sonic just thought, FORGET IT! And just ran out of the really stinky bathroom and after Charmy B. But you know, I think I'm never gonna eat pretzels again. Really? This just me. I think I hate pretzels now. I'm very sorry. Sonic passed Shadow and Silver, who were in different hallways and going in different ways. But he did not pass them at the same time because they were in different hallways. And because even though Sonic was very fast, he could not actually be in two different places at the same time. Sonic went one way, Shadow went the other way, and Silver went another other way. Another other way? Another other way. And it kept happening. One room that Sonic looked in was the art room. It made Sonic remember having art class with Charmy B. Charmy could not control his gay urges like everyone else, and he used all the colors in every picture. All, all the fucking colors. So, like, Charmy B decided to add different color palettes to his art, and he doesn't just use, like, one color like everyone else. And that automatically makes him gay. All through the years, ladies and gentlemen. Captain. Yes. I think I'm gay. Congratulations. Yeah, I, I think I'm gay. I, I use more than one color, so I think I'm gay. <laughs> Looks like you're gonna have to break up with your girlfriend then. Ah, shit. Alright. Where, like, Sonic just used blue and Amy just used pink and the other people were normal like that. Sonic thought about how this was and it was still surprised that Charmy could do something like this. <laughs> like I said before, like, they use only one fucking color, but if you use more than one color, you're gay. Are we sure this author's not hiding something? Maybe. Shadow went into a room among the other rooms that was the car fixing room. Shadow remembered about how he had car fixing class with Charmy. Like, did your high school ever have like um, a shop class? Um, no. We didn't even have like culinary classes either. What kind of fucking school do they go to? If you said it before, they go to public school. I went to public school, we didn't have car fixing classes. Well maybe they didn't go to Sonic High School. I didn't get the proper education. I'm not prepared for the world. You failed at life. Shadow remembered about how he had car fixing class with Charmy and how Charmy was really terrible at fixing cars because it was not in him to do something that was like a man would do. Shadow thought it was weird how Charmy could do something that was manly, like killing. So killing is considered manly then? Yeah. And if you can't fix a car, you're not a man. Well, that's not insulting whatsoever. I'm figuring out more and more about myself every day with this fanfiction. I just found out I'm not a man, I'm gay. What am I? A femboy. What am I? I don't know what I am anymore. You're a god. And in one room that Silver ran into was the gym room. 
where Silver one time had gym class with Charmy B. He remembered how Charmy was positively the worst at sports and being an athlete, so it made him wonder why Charmy could do something that was actually doing something, like killing. Alright, not being good at sports equals gay. Author, what are you trying to hide from us? I, I don't know, I'm pretty decent at, at like doing the sports. I don't even like sports. I, I, I do more than one color, so that makes me gay. And I'm somewhat decent at sports, and that kind of makes me kind of not gay. So what am I? I don't know. What, what am I to this author? I'm going through an identity crisis because of this fanfic. You're in too deep, Miranda. You gotta I, finish where you started. I am thinking too deep about this. I should stop. Stop thinking too deeply over a fucking Sonic fanfic. I should. Sonic and Shadow and Silver ran around and around, and eventually they just got tired and could not find Charmy at all. Charmy was trying to be a murderer, but they were just tired and tired of looking for him, so they sat down in chairs and they didn't do anything else now. Back in the front of the school, Amy decided that she needed to go to the bathroom. Rouge went with her because um, she had to go too. And Cream okay. stayed with Knuckles and Knuckles Jr. and Tails, who was still trying to become awake. Most people had left school by now, but there were still some people waiting to get into the women's bathroom. Oh, you know, because women be going to the bathroom, long lines, that one scene from Cars. Ha 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 ha. I hate this author. But Amy and Rouge did not feel like waiting in line, so they went into the men's bathroom where they normally was and people inside were men. Amy and Rouge were not men, so this was against the rules. As soon as Amy opened the door, a superpowered smell hit her in the face. It punched her right in the nose because it was Sonic's poop. <laughs> Smell. Oh my god! Screamed Rouge, what is that smell? <laughs> I've heard this smell a million times before. Hold on. You, you, you hear smell. Uh, I, I heard the smell a million times before. I don't know, I taste nothing wrong with this. Just keep reading. Said Amy to Rouge, who could say this because she was Sonic's girlfriend, meaning she's been around Sonic pooping. Alright, if you're dating someone, you can just be around them pooping? I don't know. I'm in a relationship and I- and my girlfriend hasn't been around me pooping. I guess I'm doing something wrong. You must be a really bad boyfriend if she doesn't want to be around you pooping. Yeah, she doesn't want to be around me pooping. What? Am I doing something wrong? I mean, this fanfic, didn't it tell you that you're not a man because decent at sports and you use only- and you use more than one color? I don't know what I am anymore. This fanfic is tearing us apart. This is Sonic's poop. Amy and Rouge went into the bathroom anyway because you can never get a break when it comes to going to the bathroom. No matter what, you always end up going even if you try all to not to all night. I don't- I don't care anymore. They were holding their hands above their noses, and then Amy opened the stall door, and inside was shocking to thing to see, but she thought it was Charmy B. Ah, it's you, screamed Amy in a scared and shocked way. You're a murderer. Not yet, said Charmy B, but now I will start to be by killing you. Charmy jumped in front of her from inside of the stall and into Amy, and they fell back, and Charmy was on top holding a knife and was about to cut Amy apart, and then Rouge came over and kicked Charmy, and then he flew off of her body and over to the wall by rolling. Take this, said Rouge. She flapped her bat wing, said Charmy to push all the horrible poop air at him. It all went to him. But then Charmy got up and ran right to Amy with his knife and then cut on her legs because he was short and he jumped back. Ow! Said Amy. I'm dying! Amy fell back or they got Disney. No, stay with me, said Rouge. Use your special move while you can. Amy knew what Rouge was talking about, so Amy used her special attack. Amy shouted, Girl blood! <laughs> and opened her legs, and a stream of blood shot at Charmy! <laughs> I can't! I just can't! Since Amy was so good at being nice and caring, which was using your heart, Amy was able to speed up her heart so fast about that the blood pumped out of her wound on her leg like a super soaker filled by up by vampires. Oh, oh wait, it's the wound coming out of her leg! Oh, I don't think I'm ever gonna sleep again after hearing this fanfic. I, I just got a whole different idea when she said girl blood. Oh, thank God. Oh. The blood hit Charmy in the face and body all over, really, and it was steaming and burning him. But he looked like he did not care. Amy looked shocked and yelled, How can you be so invincible? The Rue said, I bet he can handle my special attack. 
Roman's butt. Rouge flew with her bat wings and went over the Charmy and bit him right on the neck using her fangs and tried to make him fall in love with her, but it did not work. It is not working, cried Amy. He must have superpowers. He's going to kill us all for sure. All right, so being gay is also, you're like an X-Men. Aren't the X-Men technically gay because of how it is? This story's breaking my mind, random. I don't know, random. <laughs> <sighs> Amy and Rouge try to get away from Charmy, but he kept blocking them and coming at them with the knife. They were finally trapped in the corner, holding onto each other with the best in show boobs pressing up against each other. I'm not surprised. And looking like the sexiest Legos ever. Legos. Now you're sexually attracted Legos. to Legos. Alright. I don't know why, but I'm thinking of that one your favorite Martian video where it's like the Lego video and the song goes like this. We like them girls with functioning vaginas. Functioning vaginas. Functioning vagina janas. But the author's secretly your favorite Martian fan. 2012. That probably explains everything. Then all of a sudden, Tails came into the bathroom and threw a piece of a electronics at Charmy, so he just threw a whole Radio Shack at him. <laughs> so that explains why Radio Shack went out of business. Charmy looked up at Tails and said, But you bzz, are bzz, supposed to bzz, be bzz, bzz. Is, is he be Is he a robot or is like he a bee? Mm, audience, you decide. And then died right there. Tails went over to Amy and Rouge and <laughs> definitely stopped for a second to check out their boobs without them knowing, but then stopped and said, You are safe now! That was not Charmy, it was a robot! A robot? How did you know? Tails, being the smartest, thought it was a question for idiots, but said, I knew as soon as Charmy was not being hurt by Sonic's poop sting, I was watching from the door. Normally Charmy would have complained and passed out from them smelling that bad, but he did not. So I knew as soon as it, that happened, I ran and went in to get a robot killer device for my electronics. Wow, thanks, said Amy and kissed Tails on the cheek for the reward. Really, Tails, you saved us, said Rouge and kissed Tails on the other cheek. This shows that you can be cool by being smart, except if you're a nerd ass. Tails and Amy and Rouge walked out of the bathroom back to where Cream and Knuckles and Knuckles Jr. was, and soon Sonic and Shadow and Silver came back. They were all back together, and the lunch lady was the only other person still there, and she saw how tired they looked, so she made them all a bunch of chow meat sandwiches. They all ate until their tummies were gonna burst, all the time while they were eating, though Sonic thought, but then, where is Charmy, and where is the guy who made the robot, and so many other things. High school drama is just so crazy to be a part of. Is this the end of the chapter? Yes. That's the end of chapter 16. How much farther down this rabbit hole are we gonna go? We're finishing this. How many more chapters are there left? There's quite a bit. Oh my god. Are you okay? Oh my god, I hate this. <laughs> Yo, how do you feel about the chapters now? I, I missed chapter one already. You missed chapter one? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yo, I wish Sonic's balls fucking killed me right now. <laughs> anyway, this is Fick of the Week, everyone. <laughs> Goodbye.